Hello everyone and welcome back to Gage Hill Crafts. I'm Sarah and I'm Rick and today we're going to be having a blind tasting. I was going to say a blind beer tasting but today we're going to be tasting a braggot. Now for those of you who don't know a braggot is kind of a hybrid of a beer and a mead. Um, so this is the first time for me both for tasting and brewing one and mm. we're going to have an exciting taste on camera and hope it'll be okay. <laughs> All right. So Braggot, so this is a braggot, as I said, it is a combination or a hybrid of a mead and a, uh, a beer. So it is per, half of the fermentables come from the grains and the other half comes from the honey. Mm -hmm. we just taste it? And yeah, let's taste it and it. we'll talk more about it. Hmm. Wow. Well, now I'll tell you about the the, uh, the recipe a little bit, but briefly. So I got the inspiration last fall from an article that was in Brew Your Own magazine that coincidentally was by a Vermonter friend of ours named Rob Frizzell. Mm. Hey, Rob. Hey, Rob. And so he was brewing, he wrote an article about braggots and he included a recipe that he created on a braggot. And I decided I wanted to try braggot, but I wanted to tweak this recipe a little bit. So mine is a little darker. I added a little bit of a darker uh, grain to get this kind of color. Added a little bit of a lactose to kind of give it a little body. And then we added some chai tea bags to the, mm -hmm. to the mix here. So on the nose, you get all of those, uh, those types of spices that you mm -hmm. get from chai tea. And then you get a nice little... Or pumpkin spice latte. <laughs> it, do it doesn't taste like that. Sorry. <laughs> Why are you hating? No. <laughs> no, 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 no. Mm. But it does, it has those autumnal spice. Yeah, I mean, no, I, I agree, agreed. It doesn't have to, you wouldn't have to say necessarily this is a mm. chai, but it includes, chai does include some of those same spices that you might mm. have in a malt cider or right. you might have in a malt uh, wine. C cinnamon, mixture. clove, pepper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So anyway, I'm not sure what to compare it to because I literally have never had a braggot before yeah. and I've never brewed one. But it tastes good. It like tastes it. the way that I would expect. Now we did, this is our our first honest tasting of this. Yeah. Um, however, Rick and I do tend to taste like if we're racking or, mm -hmm. you know, we're bottling and we have a little bit left over that doesn't fill up a whole bottle, we'll drink it, right? Because you don't want to throw stuff away. So... Based on that taste, initial taste of like the wort or the mm -hmm. the uncarbonated version of this, yeah. this is exactly how I would expect it, and it's delicious. Um, it definitely has the honey. Mm -hmm. It's got the thinner body that you would expect more from a mead that you're mm -hmm. not like uh, because mm -hmm. again, it's like half of a grain bill. You don't get that maltiness or the sweetness or the body feel. That you right, get. the stickiness kind of in your mouth, um, and. It has the honey and all the spices, yeah. It's pretty nice. Now it, it, is, does, it doesn't taste. If you had handed me and goes, "Here's a beer," and I had a taste of it, I would have been like, "What? This, this isn't, isn't a beer." <laughs> beer. <laughs> but it's very good. Yeah. So again, it's a be creative. Um, you know, we we really enjoyed the mead that we brewed or created last year, and um, I'm very pleased with this. It's um, it's kind of young, so this is the first one we've opened. It's about mm -hmm. three weeks in the bottle. Uh, general rule of thumb is like one week in the primary, two week in the secondary, and then three weeks in the bottle in order to get that carbonation. Uh, it did have a bit of a, uh, it had the carbonation there, um, but it hasn't had a lot of head retention. Now, that might be the style. Um, mm -hmm. I can get it to get a head on it, and it could be yep. the style. But mine's been sitting for a minute, and you can see how Correct. thin that is. Right. Yeah. I also, this is the first time that I've done a carbonation in the um, the secondary fermentation. So we're using a, a a catalyst system that you don't need to rack. You drain off the bottom, get the trub off the bottom, and then you can also do everything at once. So you're not handling as much and not introducing it to air. It's kind of a, but it also makes it a little bit faster. But this is the first time that I've actually added the priming sugar to that unit and then bottle directly from it. Mm -hmm. So I imagine that some of these may be more over more, more carbonated than others. I did thoroughly mix it, mm. but you don't know. And it could be just a style. Yeah. Again, never had one, don't have anything to compare it to. I do know I like it though. 
It's very good. And it is carbonated. Um, mm -hmm. It may not be holding onto the head mm -hmm. or building up a large head, yeah. but it definitely has bubbles in it. And when you taste yeah. it, you can feel the sparkliness on your tongue. So I I think it's uh, this is it's great. great. I wouldn't want it more sparkling because, you know, the car CO2 bubbles tend to kind of give you that bite yeah. sensation. And I think that would be too strong. Yeah. I think it's brilliant. No, it's great. I'm going to keep it down in the cellar and... Mm -hmm. um, it's starting to turn autumn here, so it's going to be a good time to drink this beer as a nice warmer. Mm -hmm. uh, and those clove and cinnamon notes will really kind of be enhanced. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely a seasonal beverage. Now, I have a question. Okay. So you were saying before about the times, you know, secondary, uh, for, uh, primary fermentation, secondary fermentation bottling. Mm -hmm. But that's for a pure beer, right? Yeah. And with mead... It's true. We let it age like six to eight months. Mm -hmm. So where do you feel like, do you think that that affects this in any way, being a hybrid style? Like, would you leave it longer and feel like it was more done or something? Um, I don't know. I think that a lot of this could easily just do conditioning in the bottle. Mm -hmm. um, we'll find out. I actually probably should have read Rob's uh, recipe a little closer, more closely before mm -hmm. I did all this. Directions are overrated. It's okay. <laughs> Yes, possibly, <laughs> possibly. When brewing, I usually like to, especially when I'm doing something, but I already went off and just recreated this as it is. I, you know, I added the darker malts, I added the lactose, I added the chai. I made enough changes to make in my own. But mm -hmm. as far as the timing, you're right. That would normally be the rule of thumb for beer. Um, I did do hydrometer tests, so I did mm. know that the, uh, the, the sugars had uh, been fermented out. Gotcha. So I felt comfortable because I wouldn't have bottled this and I wouldn't have put in the carbon, the priming sugars if there was still a lot of sugar still in there because then you run the risk of exploding bottles. Mm -hmm. So I feel comfortable that it was probably had for, had done its its business and the yeast had done its business. Um, but I, I think this is going to be fine just uh, conditioning in the bottle for the next couple of months. And mm -hmm. I, I think this is something I do want to kind of like the, the meat. I want to set it aside put it in a dark space and almost forget about it. Mm -hmm. But come uh, November, December, I'm going to be ready to do the, to drink these. <laughs> sure. Yeah. I think this is going to be an excellent addition to Thanksgiving. Um, you know, you have all the, I mean, I like to make pumpkin pie for Thanksgiving and, and you, you know, we have Turkey and there's like a lot of that kind of fall flavors. You know, I put cinnamon in my cranberry uh, dressing that I make. Oh, right. And all that stuff. So I think this is going to be a great addition to that flavorscape, that, yeah, sure. that kind of meal. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. This would go very well. I will serve this with any of your homemade pumpkin pie over mm -hmm. any of the holidays that are going to be coming up in the next couple of months. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. Cool. So the moral of the story is, as always, get out there, brew, try something new. Yes. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>